I trust that you are applying all these principles that we're learning on the kingdom and are demonstrating that in your walk with God. So all of us here are still in a journey. Would you agree? All of us are in a journey and uh, there are, in that journey, there are many challenges and opportunities to exercise our faith. And today I want to talk to you about in the midst of our life journey. And that's taken from Genesis. It is a powerful story of the journey of Jacob. It records the powerful transformation of a man whose life has been radically changed by God. His story actually uh, starts from his birth in Genesis uh, 25, and it goes all the way down to Genesis 49, uh, which is his death. And that is actually a span of 147 years of his life. So in the interest of time, it's not going to take us 147 years. I would just like to read some portions of the scripture passage that will be the foundation of our message uh, today. And so I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 28, and we're going to read uh, verse 15. All right? It says this, I am with you, and I will watch over you. This is God speaking to Jacob. I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Now, just hold on to that first and make sure that you can underline it or highlight it from your device, whatever you do, but make sure that you remember that, that passage that God says, um, I will, he says, I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Now, let's go on to verse 20, down to verse 20 to 22. It says this, Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me, now Jacob responding, and will watch over me on this journey I am uh, taking, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Okay, so we can see that Jacob re responded to what, uh, uh, what God had spoken to him on that promise that God will fulfill what he had intended, what he had promised for Jacob. And so Jacob makes, the, makes this vow and saying, now if God, you're going to be with me, I'm going to go on this journey now, and if, and if you're going to be with me, then I uh, will go ahead, you are going to be my God, and then, and he even said, I'm going to give you a tenth. You can see that uh, tithing began all the way at the time of Jacob, all right? So uh, very interesting, and so uh, at this time, we know that Jacob had already deceived his father Isaac, okay? You know that story. Jacob had deceived the father Isaac, and through the help of his conniving mother, you know, his mother helped him out. His, her name is Rebecca. And he received the blessing instead of his brother Esau. And so, who was actually the rightful heir. Esau was the rightful heir, but he deceived them. And so he, he was the one who received the inheritance. And so, needless to say, he didn't start out right. Would you agree? <laughs> Jacob did not start out right. Eventually, he gets caught. And, don't, and so he moves uh, out of Beersheba, and on the way to Haran, he stops at a place called Luz, and that place he called later on as Bethel. And in this place, Luz, is where God speaks to him, as we read a while ago. God spoke to him, and that's where he made his covenant. This is where he re reached a vision where God spoke, and, and, and then we, and we read that uh, Jacob makes a vow at that point. So this is the time that he began his journey. Jacob began now, and the story of Jacob is quite interesting 
uh, one that we can relate with. You know, because uh, he didn't start out to be a good person. <laughs> you know, many of us can relate to that. He didn't start out to be a righteous man, a great man, you know, um, gifted. He didn't start out to be like that. And yet, God used him in a very powerful way. And Jacob faced many challenges uh, in his life. He had many ups and downs. And if you were to actually uh, graph his spiritual journey, it would be like a roller coaster. There were times that he was up on the mountains uh, with God, and then there were times where he was in the valley. And in that valley is the times when his flesh was actually in the way. And so uh, those were uh, the, the mountaintops were times of divine moments with God, when God would speak to him. But through it all, God's plan was fulfilled in his life. He started out as a deceiver, Jacob, and he ends with the name Israel, which is Prince of God. Imagine, what a wonderful story. A deceiver who becomes a Prince of God. And a whole nation was actually named after him until today. So no doubt, in spite of all his weaknesses, he was a chosen instrument of God. Would you agree? He was a chosen instrument of God. Jacob's story encourages us today in our own journey of faith. All of us, like I said, are in a journey. And this story will encourage us in, our, in, in that journey of faith that in spite of our weaknesses, God can transform our lives and use us for his purpose. We can learn some principles in the journey of Jacob. But rather than focusing on the character of Jacob, I want us to focus on who God is and what he did for Jacob. Are you with me? We're going to look at the character of who God is rather than looking at the life of, of Jacob. Because, uh, you know, Jacob wasn't a great guy. <laughs> it, it, his character wasn't be something that we want to emulate. But we know what God can do even through a man like him. And so I would like to focus on what, who God is. So if you're here this morning and you're thinking to yourself, saying, well, I don't think God can use me. I am not gifted. Or you just don't know what, you know, what I've done in my life and you know, uh, I'm not worthy uh, or I'm not gifted enough and, and I, God can't use me. Well, then this message is for you. Or maybe, on the other hand, if you feel like I've already done many things, I've accomplished great things, I'm already okay, I'm already done in my journey, well, and you've done many things in your life, and you're now okay, and you don't need anything anymore, well, this message is also for you. So, I want to share with you today some life lessons that we can learn from the journey of Jacob. Are you with me so far? We're going to learn some life lessons from the journey of Jacob. The first lesson is this. God does not give up on us even though we make mistakes in life. Do you agree? Amen. Are you with me this morning? Seems like I, I've just been away for some time. It's like I don't hear. I mean, what happened to you guys? <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just help me out a little bit, okay? All right. So, all right. I feel like I'm not in my church, so. <laughs> I feel like I'm a guest here. <laughs> all right, so um, Jacob obviously made a huge mistake, okay? He made a huge mistake. He deceived his father and um, uh, Isaac and cheated his brother out of his blessing. That is a horrible thing to do, all right? To, 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 to do that to your brother and, and to your father. And friends, that is because of our human nature. That's just our human nature, our desire to gain. And that's what happened to, to, um, to Jacob. You know, we may think, well, you know, I would never do anything like that. Well, maybe you don't do exactly what Jacob did, but have you ever manipulated a situation in order for you to get something you know have you ever done that 
uh, so that you can receive a benefit, just manipulate the situation a little bit. Like maybe, you know, um, crossing the border and not declaring everything that you bought. You know what I mean? You know, you bought all the bagoong and all this stuff, and you go in and, oh, I didn't buy anything, and then the dog smells it, and you get caught, you know. Uh, <laughs> Have you, ever, have you ever done that? You know, you, you cross the border and you don't. Or maybe call in si uh, sick when you're not sick. You know, so we may think we've never done anything like this. But you see, um, we live in a society where success and achievement is more important than character. So when people will do anything, this is when people will do anything just to succeed and achieve you know and, and and if the end goal listen if the end goal is to achieve and to succeed then whatever means to get there will be right right because that the goal is not character the goal is success and achievement if good character is the goal then there there are means that is not right with God because character is important so, for example, I'll, be, I'll give you some specific example. If the student's goal was just to pass and to get a degree and everything's going to be fine, you know, then cheating may be okay. And that's why students will cheat uh, to get their way through because it's okay. They're not thinking about character. They're thinking just to pass. And so they'll even boast about how they did it. You know how I did it? I just did this, you know. I copied some things, and, and the other students say, wow, that's amazing. How did you do that? Let me try that too. <laughs> you know, because the idea is to succeed, all right? But if the goal is to have the right character, to do what is right, then the means, all right, there are things that we won't do, amen? So, friends, what happens in that kind of situation is now what is wrong becomes right, and what is right is now wrong. Have you been in a situation where you're the one that's right, and everybody's doing the wrong thing, but they think you're the one that's wrong now? Because you're the Mr. Good Good, you know? Everybody else is doing the wrong thing, and you're trying to be the right person, and they're saying you're the one that's wrong. And so now what is right becomes wrong, and what's wrong becomes right. And so, friends... Like Jacob, sometimes we will do things that might even be wrong just to get ahead. See, that is not the character of a good son or a child of God. That is not what God wants for us. God does not condone the wrongdoing. Let, let's think about that, all right? Uh, let me uh, be uh, uh, right with that. And that is God will not condone the wrongdoing. But he is gracious to give us another chance. He's gracious that in spite of our weaknesses, that in spite of our faults, God can still turn it around and use it for good. He's a God of second chances. So in your journey in life, think back how many times that you've made mistakes and you've blown it and God was still there. Amen? Think about the times that you've, you've failed the Lord or you've done something and still the Lord is there. So I want to encourage you today. There may be some of you who made mistakes in the past and you feel that God is not going to use you anymore. Now, I've seen some people, even leaders sometimes, who've given up because they've failed God. They've made some bad decisions, maybe morally or financially, and because of that, they've given up. And they don't want to go through restoration anymore. They don't want to go through any correction anymore. They don't want to serve anymore. They just sit back at the, in, in, in an attendance in a, in a worship service, and they'll just sit back and not get involved in anything because they've given up on anything. They don't want to go through anything anymore in their life. They don't want to grow anymore. And so... They don't want to do ministry anymore. They've lost their passion and they've just given up. They go to church but don't want to serve and feel sorry for themselves. They've given up on their dreams. But I'm glad 
that God doesn't give up on us. Amen? Come on, give Him praise. Hallelujah. That even though we have failed and God does not give up on us, He can st still turn our situation around and use us for His glory. Romans 8.28 tells us that. And we know that in all things, all right, in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Friends, not all things are good, but God can turn things around for good. You know, you look at your situation, maybe things are bad. It doesn't look good. It, you, you can't even see uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Things may have been so bad, you don't know, and you feel hopeless. But I want to tell you something. God can still turn it around for His glory. God will work it for good. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh. If you look at Jacob's life, he had done a terrible thing, and he was separated to his brother and his father. But in the midst of that, all right, in the midst of that, he still gets a vision from God that God was going to use him. And his presence will be with him. That's amazing. And he will never leave him until he fulfills his promise. Think about that. Now, God didn't give him that promise when he was doing everything right. God gave him the promise when he was failing. <laughs> think about this. Some of us, we think, well, maybe I need to be doing everything right, then God will do something great with me. No, we could be where we are today, and if we're hearing from God, God can turn our life around. <laughs> and friends, here's an important principle. Be careful to listen to God at the point of your failure because oftentimes he will speak at those moments to give you hope so that you can get out of your condition. Sometimes that's the, the time that we miss, that when we're, when we're in a time of failure, we're just focusing on ourselves, we're not hearing God. But at the point of failure, when you've made that mistake, a financial mistake, a moral mistake, when we've made that failure in our life, that's the time we hear God. We're sensitive to hear from God and listen to His voice because at that moment is when He's giving His promise. And that's the moment that He's telling us how to get out of our condition. And so we need to be sensitive. And see, so Jacob, at that point, made a vow that if you will watch over me, and provide for me during my journey, then you are my God. He didn't have a pity party, you know, thinking about himself, how he failed and all of this and feeling sorry for himself. You know, he didn't do that because he realized that despite his mistake, God did not give up on him. Praise God. God will never give up on you. Tell the person beside you, God will not give up on you. In spite of who you are. <laughs> All right? If you stay the course, he will not give up on you until what he promised will be fulfilled in your life. Think about Peter. You know, Peter, Peter, he denied Christ. You know, not once, not twice. Three times he denied Christ, but God used him to preach to 3,000 people, and these people get saved to follow Christ. And God even used him to heal the sick and deliver people from bondage. He's faithful to his word. Amen? Second life lesson is this. It's not over until God says it's over. Is that true? I, I want to encourage you that whatever you are going through today, it's not over until God says it's over. The story of Jacob was not finished yet. It didn't end without a purpose. God didn't leave him to be a deceiver. Can you imagine if he became a deceiver and just God left him as that? Or you became a drunkard and God left you at that? Or you became an addict and God left you at that? No. 
God was not finished with him yet. Because God is not finished yet. And, and it's not over until God says it's over. And for as long as God is there, there is still hope. Amen. <laughs> so that was not God's plan for him. There was a greater plan for him. God was turning him into the man he wanted him to be. Through him will be the birth of a nation with many descendants, and they will be blessed people. And God spoke to him in that vision. I want you to see this verse in Genesis 28, verse 13 to 14. Look what it says. There above it stood the Lord. Now he saw that vision. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will be spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Now, God reaffirms that covenant that God made with Abraham. Remember, in Genesis 12, God says the same thing to Abraham. He says to Abraham, through you, all generations will be blessed. And now, after I, uh, um, Abraham, Isaac, and then now Jacob, now through Jacob, he now reaffirms that commitment again that even though you failed, I'm letting you know I'm still going to use you to be a blessing. Wow. It's amazing. So all then that he was going through. <laughs> now think about it. In that journey then, all that he was going through in his journey was part of God's plan. There is no victory without defeat. There's no resurrection without death. There's no glory without suffering. There's no pain without, oh, there's no gain without pain. Amen? Wow. Jacob experienced hardship. Even though he has such a great promise, right? There was, Jacob experienced hardship under Laban. It took him 20 years to be able to get out of Laban's household and reap the fruit of his labor. Now, you know he was under the household of Laban working for him for 20 years. And by the time he was leaving out, Laban still tried to stop him and try to get the stuff that he, was, he already earned. And look what it says in Genesis 31, verse 42. It says this. Jacob says, If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, the fear of Isaac, had not been with me, you would surely have sent me away empty-handed. But God has seen my hardship and the toil of my hands. And last night, he rebuked you. Now, he was telling Laban this. Because Laban, you know, didn't been doing a lot of bad things to him that he was laboring for 20 years. And now, even when he was leaving, he still wanted to get what, what he had already earned and so now, God intervenes and rebukes Laban. And so, he says to, to Laban, look, if God has not been uh, intervening for me, then you would have sent me empty-handed. But God saw my hardship. See, Jacob didn't go empty-handed. It felt like nothing was happening at the time. Imagining laboring for 20 years you know, he was being deceived over and over. But Jacob kept going and going because he knew it wasn't over yet. God was with him and saw his hard work. I want you, you know, look at me for a moment. God sees your hard work. I want to encourage you today. May that sink into you. Maybe you, maybe people don't even see your hardship. Maybe people don't even see what you've been working, you know, trying to raise up a family, do this and do that. Maybe people don't see that or the ministry that you're doing behind the scene. You are maybe teaching or behind in technical or maybe in the website doing things and nobody sees that. But God sees your hardship. And God intervenes for you. And that's what happened here. Uh, you know, uh, you, you, and friends, you may be going through situation in your life 
and it just feels like nothing will happen. You know, I've been doing this over and over and over, and it seems like nothing's happened. But I want to encourage you, it's not over yet until God says it's over. Just keep going. Just keep going. Tell the person beside you, don't quit. Keep going. <laughs> you know, the devil might whisper in your ear, and the devil might say to you that it's over and you will never recover. The devil might say to you, that's it. You'll not recover. You know, the plans of God in your life will not be fulfilled. Oh, this is what's, that's all you're going to be now. Nothing will happen in your life. You know, look at what happened, this and that. And all those situations and might even remind you. And you can say, devil, you're a liar. Because God says it's not over until he says it's over. You got to keep going. <laughs> See, the devil thought that Jesus <laughs> uh, was already dead and it was over. <laughs> the devil thought it was done. But little did he know that on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, on the third day, he rose from the dead. You know, and I want you to know something. There is a third day coming in your life. When things it seems like it's all dead and gone, nothing's going to happen, there's no life, I want you to know there's a third day coming where life will come again because God says it's not over yet. You've got to have hope because it's not over yet. Huh. Peter was, you know, when he denied Christ, he was depressed. Imagine he had failed his, his Lord in his life, but God wasn't finished yet. He was still around. He, he, he didn't feel sorry for himself. He continued on. And because he did, God was not finished with him yet. And God still used him, even though he already denied Christ. God used him to be able to preach to 3,000 souls coming to Christ. All because it wasn't over yet. See, a failure in life is not the end of everything. All right? I want you to know this. Whatever has happened in your life, it's not over. Because you're still around, and God is still around. He's still on the throne. Amen. Paul was murdering Christians, but God was not finished with him yet. God turned him around, and he used him to be a great apostle. See, God is not finished with you yet. Tell the person beside you, God is not finished with you yet. It's not over until God says it's over. And maybe you're here and in your situation, you're feeling, well, perhaps you've already made many accomplishments in life. But I want you to know something. God is still not finished with you yet. The, the best is still yet to come. There's more that is ahead. You can't park your car here. <laughs> your destiny is still ahead. <laughs> the best is yet to come. Thirdly, are you still with me? Here's another life lesson from Jacob. God allows circumstances so that we can put our trust in him. He allows circumstances so we can put our trust in him. You see, when Jacob learned that he was going to meet his brother Esau. He was afraid of what Esau will do to him. He knew that Esau, all right, had, had the capacity to destroy him. Remember, he took the inheritance, that right, the, being the rightful heir, he took it from him. And so Esau had the capacity to destroy him. The Bible says that he was in great fear and distress. So he made a lot of effort to prepare even trying to uh, give gifts to Esau, finding the best gift to set aside for Esau when he comes. And finally, because of his desperation, he prays to God. He was being anxious and, and stressful. He goes and prays to God, and God answers him. And when God answered him, he crippled him. Wow. <laughs> you know, what happened is the answer to, that God gave him was that God dislocated his hip and caused him to be crippled. 
That was God's solution. Now, from a natural point of view, that is not the solution. How can he now defend himself from Esau? Esau is coming, and now you dislocate my hip. How can I fight? You see, God had to put him out of commission so that God can work on his behalf. And so, uh, Jacob had to wrestle. You know, we find it seemed that it's worse situation. But God had a different way. How many know that God has, his ways are higher than our ways? <laughs> it's not his ways. Our, our ways are not his ways. So sometimes what we think would be right is not the right thing that God wants to do. So God doesn't always make logical sense to us in what he does. But he wants us to trust him. If it's logical, then you don't need to trust God. But you see, it's in those times when it doesn't make sense, and yet you need to put your trust in him. You know, there was a man, he was up in the mountains, and he was, you know, like if you've been to Calgary, this is in the high mountains and in Jasper, you know, so he was uh, walking and doing this hiking, and he stepped on a pebble, and he kind of tripped, and he fell by the the cliff, and he managed to hang on to a branch that was sticking out, and he managed to hold on. And so he's, going, he's crying out, help, help, anybody out there, please help me. There was no sound, nobody saying anything. He kept yelling, help, help, nobody, you know, please help me, anybody there. And then finally, there was a sound from heaven. It said, hello, this is God. Oh, he said, oh, God, thank you. Lord, I need your help. Please help me. And God says, let go of the branch. He says, is anybody else out there? <laughs> he can't let go. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's the way we are. We can't let go. And put our trust in God. You see, God humbled Jacob to fully trust him. Jacob reached a point that he didn't want to let go. And the Bible says that he wrestled with God until God blessed him. And it was at that point that God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Now, I want you to see the verse, uh, chapter 32, verse 28. Look at this. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Sometimes, friends, the Lord allows circumstances to quote unquote cripple us so that we don't depend on our own ability, but now we depend on his sovereignty. Amen? Where do you tend to be self-sufficient? Sometimes you need to let go and let God. How has God brought you to a place of total dependence on Him? Sometimes God has to tap us when we become so self-sufficient that we forget God. That we've been just going on and on and, and sometimes when we go on with our life just working and doing our own thing, we forget any, uh, already about life group, we forget about church celebration, we forget about prayer, we forget about reading the word. We get so caught up with the things of this world, we become so self-sufficient that we, God has to tap us and say, remember I'm here? And sometimes circumstances will happen in our life so that we turn to God. And hopefully, it's not going to be bad. And so we as believers should not wait for the time <laughs> that happens in our life <laughs> that God has to tap us. But we need to continue to go in faith and understand that the circumstances that happen in our life, God allows it. So that we can put our faith in him. Amen? We get so busy with work sometimes that we don't realize that life is not measured by the abundance of things. 
Amen? And after that, what happened here? Esau arrived. <laughs> and then when Esau arrived, but God had already changed the heart of Esau. The things that, that, that uh, uh, Jacob was worried about, the things that was stressing him, didn't even happen. <laughs> All the gift that he sent Esau didn't even use it. You know why? Because God changed the heart of Esau. And what happened was so beautiful. They saw each other, and it was a lot of hugging and kissing, and, and reconciliation happened. You know why? It was God's way. His way would have been to try to fight and do things, but God's way was different. And so God had to get him out of the picture so that he can work in his life. So friends, God's plan was better than Jacob's. So the question for us is, will you trust him regardless of whether you understand what he's doing? Finally, number four, are you still with me? It's, now how we st it's not how we start, but how we finish that matters. It's not how we start. Jacob goes back to Bethel to settle there. This was the place he stopped when he was running from his brother Esau. The same place where God spoke to him. All right? And uh, he, was, he was Jacob, the deceiver then, but now he is Israel, the prince of God. Now I want you to read uh, Genesis 35, verse 9 to 13. After Jacob returned from Padan Aram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you. Kings will be among your descendants. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you, and I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had talked with, with him. And see, friends, to this day, the nation of Israel is blessed. Despite of what goes on around in the Middle East, the nation of Israel is blessed, and the people of God is blessed. You see, Jacob didn't have a good start, but he finished well with God. As we look at our lives, friends, as we look at our lives, don't look at where you are today, but look what is possible with God. Amen? Don't look at your condition today. Look at what's possible with God. It's not how you start. Anyone can start, but how will you finish? You know, I always pray that, God, I pray that I will finish well. Because anybody can start. But how will we finish in God? You see, because they're seen, I've seen people, you know, that have gone away from the plan of God. The question is, will we finish in the plan of God? I've seen people, they start good, they're okay, but they don't finish well. Because they didn't hang on to God in their journey. They didn't apply the principles of God. They just kept going on their own way. They didn't apply the principles of humility and forgiveness. Uh, they've gone off to do their own thing. And, and they've cut relationships and forgotten those who've even helped them along the way. People have supported them. People have been there with them. They've gone in, in their own way. And they've forgotten the principles of family and relationship and all of those principles that God gives us. They've forgotten. And so they, they end up far from what God wanted them to be. See, friend, you will always have a destiny. The question is, is that destiny is in the plan of God? You will always have a destiny. You know, the question is, is your destiny where God wanted you to be? Because God has a plan for us. God has a destiny for us if we will follow that plan. So to finish well means to consistently walk as a son of God, demonstrating and reflecting Christ in our journey. That's how we finish well. See, if we make, if we make mistakes, it's not the end. 
It's not the end. We can get back on track by applying the principles of God in His kingdom. We can make mistakes. We're human beings. But if we apply the principles that God has taught us of how we can get back on track and, and align ourselves again to God, and God can still use us in the kingdom. And I encourage you today, as we learn from Jacob these life le lessons, God does not give up on us even though we make mistakes. And it's not over until God says it's over. And God allows circumstances so that we can put our trust in Him. Not in our own, own ability, not in, uh, in our skills and giftedness, but in our trust in Him. And It's not how we start, but how we finish that matters. Because in God, we always need to finish well. That is the only way we can finish well, is to continue walking as a son in the kingdom and applying the principles, demonstrating, reflecting Christ in every way we can. I don't know what you're going through today and where you are in your journey, but God knows. He sees your situation. God wants to meet you at your point of need. So the question is, will you put your faith in him? Amen? Will you put your faith in him? The ultimate part of our journey is to know God in our life, to continue to seek him in our life.